Let's talk about VOMS. Now, VOMS stands for Vestibular Ocular Motor Screening. It's basically a clinical tool that we use here in the clinic to assess patients that have had a concussion. Whether it's acute or chronic, it actually lets us establish a baseline to collect objective data that we can track and see whether a patient is progressing or if there's a problem in terms of, of their progress that we can adapt our treatment plan and, and help them achieve better results. So, basically, there's a lot of reasons uh, as to why the inner ear, the vestibular apparatus, can be affected. What we're focused on with this examination is a concussion even though we know there could be other causes such as an ear infection or uh, other problems. The ocular motor side of the exam has to do more with eye movements where we're assessing for uh, muscle function, overall patterns of movement, and whether there's nystagmus or not. Now this exam is broken into various components that we'll work through here shortly and explain every step as we go along. Now the first part of the VOMS exam is testing smooth pursuit movements of the eyes. So you're gonna stand in front of your patient and we've got Ritzy helping out here. You're gonna ask them to focus in on your finger. And Ritzy, I just want you to move your eyes, don't move your head. First, we're gonna test horizontal movement. So we're moving left to right. And make sure to hold the end ranges for a few seconds, just to monitor to see if there's any nystagmus. You're gonna do this, you know, two, three, four times, depending. And as you can see, there's good smooth pursuits here. Now we're gonna go vertical. So we're gonna go up. And once again, hold the end ranges for a few seconds just to see if there's any nystagmus. We wanna make sure we observe everything. Good, we going back down again. Okay, good. So as you're doing this, you wanna monitor everything as best as you can. Look at the eye movements, make sure movements are nice and smooth. And you definitely wanna ask the patient and follow up and see whether they had any pain or pressure at the end ranges. And you wanna make sure you note that down so that you can go back and retest at some point and make sure you're, you're making progress. Now we'll be examining convergence. So once again, we'll have the patient sitting in front of you. Uh, I want you to focus on my finger. You wanna start out about 18 inches away. So, you know, foot, foot and a half, so we're back here. Okay, Ritzy, just focus on the finger, and I'll be moving slowly towards you. So you want a nice, smooth, slow movement, and you're observing your patient's eyes, and what we're looking for is the point where one of the eyes deviates away, and Ritzy's actually pretty good watching. I noticed her left eye just deviated a little bit away, or when the patient actually tells you that they're seeing double or their vision's gone blurry, so feel free to tell me that as well. So we're going to do that one more time. We're coming in. Good. Right about there. Okay. So if you see uh, that the patient is having some difficulty, what would be considered normal is five centimeters. So as my finger comes in and we get that deviation of the eye away, or the patient reports double vision, we're going to measure the distance from the bridge of the nose of the patient to the finger. And five centimeters or less is considered normal. If we see that there's a problem with convergence, you may suggest to your patient that maybe they should avoid reading for a while because the eyes are definitely straight. Next, we'll be performing the test saccades. So once again, you're standing in front of the patient. Uh, you're gonna focus on my fingers this time. What we're looking for this time are gonna be horizontal and vertical eye movements. And I'll explain as I go along. So you're gonna start about 18 inches from the patient's nose. So Ritzy, you're gonna move out about 18 inches. And then each finger is gonna move out to either side about 18 inches. So we're going up this way and that way. So what I'll have you do is you're gonna look back and forth, nice smooth movements from left to right or right to left, whichever way you wanna go. And I'm gonna be observing, okay? So you can start now. So look to one finger and back to the other one, and then just keep going continuously. So as we're doing this, we're looking for eye movement, making sure it's nice and smooth. And you can either time this for 10 seconds or you can count the number of cycles. But the key point here is once the patient stops, okay, good, you wanna follow up with them and see, has this caused any worsening in their headache, any dizziness, any nausea, or any fogginess? 
and then you could even get them to rate it between 0 and 10. And you're recording this each time because that way you have some objective data that you can go back to and see whether the condition is progressing or worsening. So now that we've done horizontal testicod, we're going to go vertical. So same idea. We're starting at the nose, coming back about 18 inches, and this time we're going up 18 inches and down. Hold my fingers like this, maybe it'll be easier for you. Okay, so now look, yeah, from top to bottom, and keep going, nice and smooth, continuous movement. You want to guide your patient. If you see they're going too fast or it's uncomfortable, you can ask them to slow down, or if they're going too slow, ask them to, you know, make it nice and smooth. There we go, good, just a few more. And once again, you can time this for 10 seconds or count the number of cycles. Just keep it the same each time. Good, and stop. And then we'd follow up again, asking if there's any worsening in symptoms, uh, worse headache, any nausea, fogginess, or any dizziness. And that's the key there, is to really follow up with them and see how their symptoms are progressing. Next test will be the visual ocular reflex. So once again, we're standing in front of the patient, the difference being now is I want you to focus your gaze on my finger. So you're going to fix your eyes on my finger, but you're going to be moving your head back and forth, left to right. So we're testing horizontal and vertical, starting with the horizontal. Okay, so you focused. So now turn your head to the right. Good. And then to the left and make it a nice smooth movement back and forth. So you're looking at the eyes, you're observing, trying to see what, you know, are they moving smoothly? Are they able to focus? Is there any nystagmus? Good. Once again, you could time this, time this for 10 seconds, or you could count the number of cycles. Just keep it consistent each time. Good. Okay, good. And stop. And then we're following up with a patient, making sure we ask, was there any worsening in the headache, any dizziness, nausea, or fogginess? And we're recording that so that we can have that data to keep looking at as this progresses. Okay, so now same idea that you're going to fixate on my finger, but you're going to move your head up and down this time. Okay, so you can start. So look up first. Good. Nice and down. Okay. And nice smooth movements. Good. So once again, we could time this or count the number of cycles. We're observing the eyes, making sure movement's smooth, noting down any findings, any nystagmus we may see. Good. Just a couple more. Good. Nice. And stop. And once again, following up, asking whether there's any worsening in the headache, any dizziness, any nausea, or any fogginess. Now, the last part of the VOMS test is the visual motion sensitivity test. So once again, this time you're facing your patient. Ritz is going to stand. What you're going to do is keep your feet together, so make sure your feet are together. You're going to put your arms straight out in front. You're going to interlace your fingers and put your thumbs straight up. Okay, so I want you to stare at your thumbs, focus on them. You're going to move your whole body, so shoulders and hips, while your feet remain planted, and you're going to keep looking at your thumbs. And we're going to go left and right, about 80 degrees each way. And the tempo, the rhythm that we want, is kind of like a metronome, a tick-tocking motion back and forth. So we'll do it together a bit, and then we'll stop, and I'll have you do it, okay? So let's go uh, to my left. So this way first, we're going to go tick-tock, kind of like that. Good. Nice and smooth. Okay. And keep looking at your thumbs. Good. Okay, good. And stop. Good. How does that feel? Okay? Yes. Okay, so that's the rhythm that we want, that, that, that tempo. So you can put your arms out in front. Focus on your thumbs, interlace the fingers, good. Okay, so as the patient does this, you wanna focus in on their eyes, observe you know, movements, make sure they're blinking, and it's also a good time to assess their balance to see if they're gonna stagger, if they start tilting to side to side. So, here we go, okay, start. Good, that's a nice tempo. You wanna see them do at least 10 revolutions. Good, almost there. Good, and stop, good. And then once again, you're following up with the questions. Is there any worsening of symptoms, worsening of a headache, any dizziness, any nausea or any fogginess? No. no. Good, okay, good, and relax. And that concludes the VOMS test. Now once again, just to reiterate a bit, the reason we're doing this is we're screening patients that have had a concussion, whether it be chronic or acute. And it's a great tool that's easily done within the office. You can make it a little bit longer, go into some other testing, you can shorten it up. 
It suits the needs of the practitioner. It's easy to do anywhere, and it gives you great objective data that you can check and recheck each time when seeing the, pa the patient to see whether there's any progress in their condition.